ಮಾತ್ರೇ ನಮಃ ಇನ್ ಆನ್ಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಹಿಸ್ಟರಿ ಅವರ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ವಾಸ್ ರೂಲ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ಎಂಪರರ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ಎಂಪೈರ್ಸ್ ದರ್ ವಾಸ್ ಡಿವಿಷನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ನಾರ್ತ್ ಟು ಸೌತ್ ಎಸ್ಪೆಷಲಿ ಇನ್ ಸೌತ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಲಾಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಹೂ ರೂಲ್ಡ್ ಸೌತ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ದೇ ಬ್ರಾಡ್ ಗ್ಲೋರಿ ಟು ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಟ್ರೆಡಿಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಸಿವಿಲೈಜೇಷನ್ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಫೀಲ್ ಪ್ರೌಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಟೇಕ್ ಚೋಳ ಕಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ತಮಿಳುನಾಡು ಚೇರ ಪಲ್ಲವ ಪಾಂಡ್ಯ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎಸ್ಟಾಬ್ಲಿಷ್ ದೇರ್ ಓನ್ ಧರ್ಮ ದೇರ್ ಓನ್ ಐಡೆಂಟಿಟಿ ಇನ್ ಈಚ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಸೆಕ್ಟರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ ಪೊಲಿಟಿಕಲ್ ಎಕನಾಮಿಕಲ್ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲ್ ಇನ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಶೋ ದರ್ ಐಡೆಂಟಿಟಿ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಕಮ್ ಅಕ್ರಾಸ್ ಟು ವಿಜಯನಗರ ಕಿಂಗ್ಡಮ್ ದ ಕಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ವಿಜಯನಗರ ಲೈಕ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ದೇವರಾಯ ಎಟ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ರೂಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ಡಮ್ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ಗೋಲ್ಡನ್ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಡು ಟು ಸೇ ಎಟ್ ದೋಸ್ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ದ ರಾಯಲ್ ಏಜ್ ವಾಸ್ ಗೋಲ್ಡನ್ ಏಜ್ ಸಚ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ರೂಲ್ಡ್ ಅವರ್ ಸೌತ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬ್ರಾಟ್ ಇನ್ ಆಲ್ ಕ್ಯಾಟಗರೀಸ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ವೈಡ್ ನೇಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫೇಮ್ ಈವನ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಗೋ ಅಕ್ರಾಸ್ ನಾರ್ತ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಆರ್ ವೈ ವೇರ್ ಅವರ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಎವ್ರಿ ನ್ಯೂ ಕಂಡ್ ಕಾರ್ನರ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಆಲ್ ದ ರೂಲರ್ಸ್ ದೋಸ್ ಡೇಸ್ ರೂಲ್ಡ್ ಅಕಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಚರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ they maintain a dignity of our indian tradition and culture therefore worldwide indian culture tradition withstood so far because of those kings because of their intellectual and future vision we people are proudly saying that they are our kings this is they were our kings in this way even rashtrakuta dynasty there was a kanishka dynasty magadha dynasty maurya dynasty so many were people ruled that but rashtrakuta dynasty is entirely different these people have their own idol they used to expand their kingdom without going beyond the violence and they established dharma they were fought for righteousness during their rule people were living very 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 happily even the tax was minimized they they never forced the people in any category all the kings from rashtrakuta they protected our culture and arts even they controlled the western influence in our culture every part of the their country their kingdom they looked after the people as they were therefore in the history of rashtrakutas is also one of the golden line in such a way they ruled the people in all categories we have to know at least a bit of our ancient kings especially the indian kings basing on that <coughs> i want to 
give you the detail of one of the Indian kings. Therefore, I took the topic <coughs> Rastrakuta dynasty. Let us have detailed description. Prayer. Jnananandamayam devam Nirmala spartika kritim Adharam sarva vidyanam Hayagriva mupasmahe The Rashtrakuta dynasty <coughs> ruled South India. Example, Karnataka from 725-985 AD. The word Rashtra in Sanskrit means region and Kuta indicates chieftains. They were chieftains in central India before becoming a ruling dynasty. They had good command and contribution towards art and architecture, which was unique during those period. They ruled between <coughs> 6th to 13th century. The dynasty ruled from Malwa's region in Manpur, today Madhya Pradesh, and in Achalpur, which is modern Elichipur in Maharashtra, and also in Kanaus, were all the Rashtrakuta clans. They, their dynasty realm spread virtually over most of Maharashtra, Karnataka, and also Andhra Pradesh. The clan that ruled from Elichapur was a feudatory of Badami Chalukyas and during the rule of Donti Durga, it overthrew Chalukya Kirti Varman too and went to build an empire with the Gulbarga region in modern Karnataka as its base. <coughs> This clan came to be known as Rashtrakutas of Manyaketa, rising to power in South India in 753 AD. At the same time, Pala dynasty of Bengal and Pratihara dynasty of Malwa were gaining force in eastern and northwestern India respectively. This period between the 8th and 10th centuries saw a tripartite struggle for the resources of rich Gangetic plains, each of these three empires annexing the seat of power of Kanaus for short period of time. At their peak, the Rashtrakutas of Manyaketa ruled a vast empire stretching from Ganges River and Yamuna River, Dobe in the north to Cape Cameroon in the south, a fruitful time of political expansion, architectural achievements, and famous literary contributions. The early kings of this dynasty were Hindu, but the later kings were strongly influenced by Jainism. During their rule, Jain mathematicians and scholars contributed important works in Kannada and Sanskrit. Amogavarsha I, the most famous king of this Rashtrakuta dynasty, wrote Kaviraja Marga. <coughs> a landmark literary work in the Kannada language. Architecture reached a milestone in the Dravidian style. The finest example of the which is seen in Kailasanada temple at Ellora. Other important contributions are the sculptures of Elephanta Caves in modern Maharashtra as well as the Kashi Vishwanatha Temple and Jain Narayana Temple at Pattadakal in modern Karnataka, all of which are UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Think it however they create. 
Danti Durga of Rashtrakuta dynasty between 752-756 BC was the first and the most important king who defeated the Chalukyas of Badami. He laid the foundation of Rashtrakuta Empire. He ruled from Latalur, mean now we say Latur, and later shifted the capital of Manyakota or Manyaketa. He found the Gulbarga region of Karnataka. Rashtrakutas were great patterns of art and architecture and were great builders also. Krishna, one uncle of Danti Durga, was one who built the world famous Kailasanada temple at Ellora, around 29 kilometers from Aurangabad. Which is a massive structure is called carved out of the single rock, monolithic hewn out of a mountain, and is believed to be truly a remarkable engineering feat of the eighth century. You understood why I should took uh, Rashtrakuta because of these capability, these identities. The origin of the Rashtrakuta dynasty has been a controversial topic of Indian history. These issues pertain to the origin of the earliest ancestors of the Rashtrakutas during the time of Emperor Ashoka in the 2nd century BC and the connection between several Rashtrakutas that ruled small kingdoms in the northern and central India and the Deccan between the 6th and 7th centuries. The relationship of these medieval Rashtrakutas to the most famous later dynasty, the Rashtrakutas of Manyaketa, who ruled between the 8th and 10th centuries, has also been debated. The sources of Rashtrakuta history include medieval inscriptions, ancient literature, in the Pali language, Sanskrit and Kannada and the notes of Arab travelers. Theories about the dynastic lineage, Surya Vamsha and Chandra Vamsha, the native region and the ancestral home have been proposed. Based on information gleaned from inscriptions, royal emblems, the ancient clan names such as Rashtrika, epithets Rata, Rashtrakuta, Lattalura, Purva, Tishwara. The names of princes and princesses of the dynasty and clues from relics such as coins. The earliest existing Kannada literary writings are credited to their core poets and royalty. Though these Rashtrakutas were Kannadigas, they were conversant in a Northern Deccan language as well. The heart of the Rashtrakuta Empire included nearly all of Karnataka, Maharashtra and parts of Andhra Pradesh, an area which Rashtrakutas ruled for over two centuries. The Samangad copper plate grant confirms that feudatory king Danti Durga, who probably ruled from Achalapura <coughs> in Birar, defeated a great Carnatic army of the Badami Chalukyas of Kirtivarman II of Badami in 753 and took control of the northern regions of the Chalukya Empire. He then helped his father-in-law Pallava king Nandivarman regain Kanchi from Chalukyas and defeated the Gurjaras of Malva and the ruler of Kalinga, Koshala and Sri Shailam. Dantidurga's successor Krishna won brought major portions of present-day Karnataka and Konkan under his control. During the rule of Dhruva Darvasha, who took control in 780, the kingdom expanded into an empire that 
encompassed all of the territory between the Kaveri River and Central India. He led successful expeditions to Kanauj, the seat of Northern Indian power, where he defeated the Gurjara Pratiharas and the Palace of Bengal, gaining him fame and vast booty, but not more territory. He also brought the eastern Chalukyas and Gangas of Talakad under his control. According to Altekar and Sain, the Rashtrakutas became a pan-India power during his rule. The ascent of Dhruva Dharavasha, <coughs> Dhruva Dharavasha, third son Govinda, to the throne heralded an era of success like never before. There is uncertainty about the location of the early capital of the Rashtrakusa, Rashtrakutas at this juncture. During his rule, there was a three-way conflict between the Rashtrakutas, Palas and Pratiharas for control over the Gangetic Plains. Describing his victories over the Pratihara Emperor Nagabatta II and the Pala Emperor Dharmapala, the Sanjan inscription stated the horses of Govinda III drank from the icy waters of the Himalayan streams. War elephants tasted the sacred waters of the Ganges. His military exploits have been compared to those of Alexander the Great and Pandarjuna of Mahabharata. <clears throat> Having conquered Kanaus, he travelled south, took firm hold over Gujarat, Kosala, Gangavadi, humbled the Pallavas of Kanchi and installed a ruler of his choice in Vengi and received the two statues as an act of submission from the king of Ceylon. The Cholas, the Pandyas, and the Cheras all paid him tribute. As one historian puts it, the drums of the Deccan were heard from the Himalayan caves to the shores of the Malabar. The Rashtrakutas Empire now spread over the areas from Cape Camorin to Kanaus and from Banaras to Broj over their administration. Inscriptions and other literary records indicate the Ashtakuta selected the crown prince based on heredity. The crown did not always pass on to the eldest son. Abilities were considered more important than age and chronology of births and exemplified by the crowning of Govinda III who was the third son of king. Dhruvadhara Varsha. The most important portion under the king was the chief minister, Mahasandhi Vigrahi, and the prime minister of all who were usually associated with one of the feudatory kings and must have held a position in government equivalent to a premier. A Mahasamanta was a feudatory or high ranking regal officer. All cabinet ministers were well versed in political science and possessed military training. There were cases where women supervised significant areas, as when Revaka Nimaddi, daughter of Amoka Varsha I, administered Edator Vishaya. Vishaya I mean a a place. The kingdom was divided into Mandala or Rashtras. A Rashtra was ruled by Rashtrapati, who on occasion was the emperor himself. Amoga Varsha once empire had 16 Rashtras. Under a Rashtra was a Vishaya, I mean a district, overseen by a Vishayapati. Trusted ministers sometimes ruled more than a Rashtra. For example, Bankesha, a commander of Amokavarsha, one headed 
बनावासी ट्वेल थौसंड बेलवेला थ्री हंड्रेड पुलगेरे थ्री हंड्रेड कुंदूर फै हंड्रेड एंड कुंडर्गे सेवेंटी द सफिक्स डिसनेटिंग द नंबर आफ् विलेजस् इन दैरीटरी बिलो द विषय वास् नु नाड़ लुक्ड आफ्टर बै दि नाड़गौड़ आर नाड़गुवंड समाइम्स there were two such officials one assuming the position through heredity and another appointed centrally the lowest division was a grama or village administrator by a grama pat or prabhu govinda the rashtrakuta army consisted of a large contingents of infantry horsemen and elephants A standing army was always ready for war in a cantonment in the regal capital of Manyaketa. Large anim- uh, armies were also maintained by the feudatory kings, who were expected to contribute to the defense of the empire in case of war. Chieftains and all the officials also served as commanders, whose postings were transferable if the need arose their economy the rashtrakuta economy was sustained by its natural and agricultural produce its manufacturing revenues and money gained from its conquest cotton was the chief crop of the regions of southern gujarat khandesh and birar minnagar gujarat ujjain python and tagara were manufactured in python and warangal the cotton yarn and cloth was exported from baroch white calicos were manufactured in barampur and birar and exported to persia turkey poland arabia and egypt the konkan region ruled by the feudatory silharas produced large quantities of betel leaves coconut and rice while the lush forests of mysore ruled by the feudatory ganges produced such woods as sandal timber teak and ebony incense and perfumes were exported from the ports of tana and saimur the deccan was rich in minerals though its soil was not as fertile as that of the gangetic plains the copper mines of kadapa bellari chanda buddana narsingapur ahmednagar bijapur and dharwa were an important source of income and played an important role in the economy diamonds were mined in kadapa bellari karnool and golconda the capital manyaketa and devagiri were important diamond and jewelry trading centers the leather industry and tanning flourished in gujarat and some regions of northern maharashtra mysore with its vast elephant herds important for the ivory industry the economy during the era of rashtrakuta was mainly due to the agricultural and natural produce cotton was called the principal crop in the southern region like gujarat khandesh and birar tagara ujjain minnagar and gujarat were also significant producers and centers of textile industry the <coughs> calicos were manufactured in barampur and birar and exported to persia turkey poland arabia and cairo Mysore was a good producer of wood sandal timber and ebony Kadapa Bellary Karnool and were center for mining the diamonds The Rashtrakuta empire controlled most of the western seaboard of the subcontinent which facilitated its main trade The Gujarat branch of the empire earned significant income from the port of Baroch one of the most prominent ports in the world at that time the empire's chief exports were cotton yarn cotton cloth muslins hides mats 
ఇండిగో ఇన్సెన్స్ పర్ఫ్యూమ్స్ బీటల్ నట్స్ కోకోనట్స్ శాండల్ టీ టింబర్ సెసమ ఆయిల్ అండ్ ఐవరీ ఇట్స్ మేజర్ ఇంపోర్ట్స్ వర్ ఫ్యాల్స్ గోల్డ్ డేట్స్ ఫ్రమ్ అరేబియా స్లేవ్స్ ఇటాలియన్ వైన్స్ టిన్ లీడ్ టోపాస్ స్టోరాక్స్ స్వీట్ క్లోవర్ ఫ్లింట్ గ్లాస్ యాంటిమొని గోల్డ్ అండ్ సిల్వర్ కాయిన్స్ సింగింగ్ బాయ్స్ అండ్ గర్ల్స్ ఫర్ ద ఎంటర్టైన్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ ది రాయల్టీ ఫ్రమ్ అదర్ ల్యాండ్స్ ట్రేడింగ్ ఇన్ హార్సెస్ వాజ్ అన్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ అండ్ ప్రాఫిటబుల్ బిజినెస్ మోనోపోలైజ్డ్ బై ద అరబ్స్ అండ్ సమ్ లోకల్ మర్చెంట్స్ ద రాష్ట్రకూట గవర్నమెంట్ లివీడ్ ఎ షిప్పింగ్ ట్యాక్స్ ఆఫ్ గోల్డెన్ గద్య నక on all foreign vessels embarking to any other parts and fee of one silver coin on vessels traveling locally artisans and craftsmen operated as a corporations rather than individual business inscriptions mention guilds of weavers oil men artisans basket and mat makers and fruit sellers a sound that teach inscription refers to an assemblage of all the people of a district headed by the guides of the region some guilds of the region uh, were considered superior to others just as some corporations were and received royal uh, charters uh, determining their powers and privileges inscription such that these guilds had their own uh, military to protect goods in transit and like village assemblies they operated banks that lent money to traders and business the government's income came from five principal sources what are they no regular taxes fines income taxes miscellaneous taxes tributes from feudatories an emergency tax was imposed occasionally and were applicable when the kingdom was under distress such as when it faced natural calamities or was preparing for war or overcoming wars or ravages income tax included taxes on crown land wasteland specific types of trees considered valuable to the economy mines salt treasures unearthed by pros, uh, prospectors additionally customary presents were given to all kings or royal officers on such festive of occasions as marriage or birth of a son the king determined the tax levels based on need and circumstances in the kingdom while ensuing that an undue burden was not placed on the peasants the land owner or tenant paid a variety of taxes including land taxes produce taxes and payment of the overhead for maintenance of the gounda and the village head land taxes were varied based on type of land its a produce and situation and ranged from 8% to 16% a banwasi inscription of 941 mentions reassessment of land tax due to the drying up of an old irrigation canal in the region the land tax may have been as high as 20% to pay for expenses of military frequently at war in most of the kingdom land taxes were paid in goods and services and rarely was cash accepted a portion of all taxes earned by the government was returned to the village for maintenance culture and religion religion the rashtrakuta kings supported the popular religions of the day in the traditional spirit of religions tolerance scholars have offered various arguments regarding uh, which specific religions the rashtrakutas favored basing their evidence on inscriptions coins and contemporary literature 
Some claim that Rashtrakutas were inclined towards Jainism. Since many of the scholars who flourished in their counts, courts and in Sanskrit, Kannada and few in Apabramsa and Prakriti were Jains. The Rashtrakutas built well-known Jain temples at locations such as Lokapura in Bagalkot district and their loyal feudatory, the Western uh, Ganga dynasty feudatory, the Western uh, built Jain monuments at Shravana Bedagoda and Kambadahalli. The Rashtrakuta rule was tolerant to multiple popular religions, Jainism, Vaishnavism and Shaivism, Buddhism too found support and was popular in places such as Dambal and Balligavi, although it had declined significantly by this time. The decline of Buddhism in South India began in the 8th century in <coughs> with the spread of Adi Shankara's Advaita philosophy society. Chronicles mention more castes than four commonly known castes in Hindu social system. Some as many as seen castes, the Jains enjoyed a very high status during this period. The caries of Brahmins usually related to education, judiciary, astrology, mathematics, poetry and philosophy. Thus, Rashtrakutas brought the name and fame to our Indian culture and tradition. Om Shri Kantai Kalyani Nede Nede Dram Shri Venkat Nivasai Shri Nivasai Mangalam Mangalasasana Prem Dachari Brokamai Sarvaish Chapurvai Rachari Satruta Yastu Mangalam